Zapier is a low code software that allows you to connect to apps, move information around and automate a ton of different tasks. Now Zapier is one of these many software services that have popped up recently like make.com or NN8 or Power Automate. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what Zapier looks like as far as the interface goes. Then we're gonna go over the pricing plans it has because it can get pretty expensive. And then finally wrap up by talking about a couple other alternatives that may be cheaper or easier or more flexible. If you're new here, my name is Liz. I'm a data science manager at Intel, but I like to film videos on different software products that you could use for work or for your business or content creation, so you don't have to. So I'm paying <laughs> to try out these services and let you guys know which ones work, what the pricing is like, and really some tips and tricks on them. So when you first sign up, for Zapier here. This is what your dashboard is going to look like. So you don't have to enter a credit card information. They have a free plan, which I'll let you know what you can get for free and what you cannot. But this is what it looks like. Now, if you're new to automation, a Zap is basically like a workflow or scenario um, where you can automate two things together. So you can see down here, these are some recommended for me. You can automatically send new uploads to YouTube, the video links out to your Twitter automatically. That would be considered a zap because you're basically, it's two connectors, right? So YouTube and Twitter, T YouTube is sending it to Twitter. So that is what a zap is referred to as. In Power Automate, it's called a flow. In make.com, it's called a scenario. So they all have fancy words for them. So just know what they kind of mean. Now in the free plan, you can see right here, I can use up to five zaps. Now at make.com, you can use up to two, but you'll see later where they get you as far as cost wise. So if we look here um, on zaps, so here's some templates, so you can click them. All you have to do is sign into them, but I'll show you the ones that I have running. So my zaps, I'm on the free plan because I'm cheap. Um, but I might actually try out some of the fancier plans, but I just don't need to right now. So if we look here and I'll just zoom in for you guys, um, I have add new review subscribers to go. So that's going away because review is dying, but the, these other two, I actually consistently use. So ghost newsletters to Twitter and YouTube posts to Twitter. So I automate a couple things that go to my Twitter account because when I upload a YouTube video, I want it to automatically tweet stuff. And I have a whole video on how I set that up. But essentially, if we go in here, you can see that it says on, but this is what it looks like. It looks almost identical to Power Automate. <laughs> so if we look here, this is a two, a one step, I guess, um, zap. You can do multiple step zaps, um, but I think you have to pay extra for that. Um, so if you look here, if I were to add another one, that's another step and then you have to pay for that. But you can see all I'm doing here is I'm just logged into my YouTube channel and you basically pick your account, set up your trigger and then paste in, I mean, just go down here and click whatever video you want. And then it will automatically look for the videos. This is the video I tested with the tracking notion one. It looks kind of scary. I will admit that this looks kind of scary, especially if I show you the Twitter if I look at the uh, setup action, this looks terrifying, does it not? Um, Make.com looks a little bit less terrifying. This reminds me a lot of Power Automate, like almost identical as far as setup, but it actually has more functionality because I used to have this exact flow in Power Automate, but I wasn't able to get this max resolution thumbnail. So if you go here, it'll show all these options. You don't actually have to type these in, like you just show more and you just click the one you want. So I picked this one because it says max um, resolution default picture, which is a JPEG file. So um, anyway, it looks kind of terrifying. I understand, but it is low code because you aren't actually coding anything. You're just selecting options that come from connecting to your YouTube channel. So essentially when you do your choose um, your account, you basically, you just sign in. If there's like an extra window that pops up and you just sign in. It's really cool. Um, I really recommend if you're not automating things, you should start because there are a lot of different options and I even have a video comparing them all. But transfers is interesting because it's more like if you have a bulk amount, like if you have a whole email list and you wanna send it somewhere, then you can do it as a transfer. Um, they also talk about the different apps they have. So that ones I'm using are these ones because I host my newsletter on Ghost. Um, and then there's app history. So if you mess something up, you can go back and check what you did. Um, 
Yeah, and then uh, explore and get help. No one actually clicks those things. I mean, do we, do we click those things? I don't know, I've never have. Um, and then here's the tasks and zaps. So tasks are like, I uploaded two videos, so it ran twice on my account. So that's two tasks, but I only have one zap, right? One zap ran two times. So the zaps are the workflows. The tasks are when it actually activates and runs what you told it to run. Okay, so where they actually get you with Zapier is the cost. So if we go to upgrade plan here below, we can see just how expensive this can actually get. So if we look here, the free plan is great. Okay, so if you're new, try out the free plan. I think it's better than make.com's free plan, personally, because here you get five zaps. Now they're single step, but you know, they're five full zaps and then you can get two when you do make.com. So personally, I think the free plan is better here, but I take it back when it goes back to starter and professional lands, because here, this is like charging you $50 a month, $50, my God. So if you're, if you compare that to make.com, at least when I was looking at it today, it's $9 on make.com to have unlimited scenarios, which is the same thing as a zap, zap and, and scenario, the same thing. So if you wanna do more than five, you wanna switch over to make.com and get used to that format. So it really is like, okay, how deep do you wanna go into this automation world? But if you're playing around with it, both free plans are great, but I just be careful because there's alternatives out there and you don't have to pay $300. I mean, like some of these are insane, like $700 a month. Like, what are you automating? I, I would love to know, <laughs> but uh, maybe I'm just not that advanced yet. Um, so that is my recommendation when it comes to this. I also suggest paying yearly because you'll save money on any software application. If you think you're gonna um, use it for a year, then always pay for the yearly. I know it hurts, it hurts, but you'll save money. So just listen to me. Now, as I was mentioning before, make.com is Zapier's main competitor. So that is who they're, they're selling against, okay? So you want to use that to your advantage because now you can check out make.com and see which ones better because they're almost identical as far as the software goes. Like you're automating things. You're connecting to already made connectors. You don't have to use API keys, like you just sign in. They both do the same thing. They're selling you the same service. So essentially you wanna pick the cheaper one. Um, unless you're like super picky or there's a reason, like they don't have a certain template or, or whatever, but just make sure you check the prices of both because they're almost identical. The second alternative is Power Automate. I love Power Automate. It is the first automation program I learned how to use. The advantage to Power Automate is the fact that it will integrate well with your work. So if you're at a very large organization, most likely you're using Outlook, you know, Microsoft 365, you have Excel, you have Power Automate, you just don't know it. So you just gotta click the link and sign into your work account to see if you have it. And then you can start using your own flows. I mean, I think it might be frowned upon, but you could. I used to do it in the past. I don't anymore because I have my own Microsoft 365 account because I like to film these tutorials. But I'm just saying, um, as far as work goes, you can automate your own tasks at your company. You could have somebody send you an email and then you rip the attachment off and put it on OneDrive. I do that at work. I set up a lot of automations at work to make my life easier. So if you want to use this for your actual job and not just side hustles and stuff, I suggest Power Automate. The third alternative is called N8N. 8N8N? Eight, eight I hate the name of it. Anyway, it's a little bit more developer heavy. You have to use API keys, webhooks, all that stuff, but there's way more connectors. And yeah, you still have to put the API key into the connector. It's not as nice as like just being able to sign in like Zapier or make.com, but it does have a lot of other connectors and you can do a lot more with it and they're called nodes. Um, so it's really, it's really cool. I, I like Anaton. It's a little expensive and requires you to have a little bit more of developer knowledge, but it, it's nothing you can't just pick up on. If you're interested in any of the other software that I've mentioned in this video, I have links to all of them below and around here. So if you wanna see the comparison between the two and which, what my recommendations are, I will link those all around here. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.